An announcement out of D.C. this week proves that Christians don't have to choose between politically strategic and long-term cultural engagement. Each matters. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. According to the records in fiscal year 2018, the U.S. Health and Human Services Civil Rights Office received more than 1,300 complaints alleging conscience violations or religious discrimination. That's significantly more than in any year recorded under the previous presidential administration. One complaint last year came from a Catholic nurse working at the University of Vermont Medical Center. The unnamed nurse claims her employer forced her to take part in an elective abortion, though she'd informed the hospital of her pro-life beliefs. The nurse was scheduled to help a patient who'd suffered a miscarriage, but when she walked into the operating room, she was expected to assist with an elective abortion. The doctor in charge even said to her, don't hate me. Now, this is a university medical center that didn't even practice elective abortions throughout most of its history, but a new rule instated in 2017 changed that and gave management the power to punish staffers who refused to participate. What this nurse experienced was a violation of federal law. According to what are known as the church amendments, health care personnel have, quote, an unqualified right to decline to participate in abortions without fear of adverse employment actions or loss of staff privileges. Now, under the Obama administration, the Health and Human Services Office ignored these laws. In fact, according to Roger Severino, who currently directs the Office of Civil Rights at HHS, the previous administration systematically neglected to enforce them. Well, not anymore. On Wednesday, Severino issued a notice of violation against the medical center, giving them 30 days to comply with the law and allow medical staff to opt out of abortions or lose federal funding. The hospital isn't cooperating. In a statement, they claim HHS lacks the authority to conduct such an investigation and that the hospital's forced abortion policy strikes the appropriate and legal balance between employees' religious rights and patient care. Where, according to Severino, there isn't a balance to strike. As he told The Atlantic, religious freedom laws are the ones mentioned in the very first amendment to the Constitution. They have pride of place. They've been neglected for too long. And get what he said next. America reached a consensus census after Roe v. Wade. Nobody should be forced to participate in an abortion against their will. How can we countenance a situation where we allow a federally funded entity to force a medical professional to participate in taking a human life? That's what this case is about. Now, I cannot even imagine anyone working in the previous HHS saying those words. During the Obama administration, former Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius mandated that all employers, with very few exceptions, provide free contraception and abortion-inducing drugs as part of their employee health insurance. In fact, they argued all the way to the Supreme Court that the Little Sisters of the Poor, a group of nuns, should be forced to comply with the mandate. So from forcing nuns to freeing nurses... Times have changed. This isn't just a win for conscience rights in the First Amendment. It vividly demonstrates to the rest of us that elections matter. People are policy, which means worldview matters. The law can be super clear, but if executive branch appointees are unwilling to enforce it, our freedoms are at stake. And this story also demonstrates that cultural engagement is worth it. As Severino said, Americans have reached a consensus in the last 40 years. No one should be forced to participate in abortions against their will. Look, with so many things in our culture going from unthinkable to unquestionable, it's nice to see abortion moving in the opposite direction. If and when an administration hostile to preborn life moves back in the White House, there's still a 40 year movement committed to protecting preborn life already in motion, and it's changing hearts and minds. I thank God the HHS is under new management. Protecting nurses from violating their consciences is an infinite improvement over forcing nuns to violate theirs. For Breakpoint, I'm John Stone Street.